COD Zombies has had a massive cheating problem over the past decade, from the use of illegal glitches, to the use of god mode in splicing runs together, it's had its fair share of cheaters. However, what makes COD Zombies more unique from any other game is how difficult it is to cheat. There's so many factors against cheaters that it's nearly impossible to not get instantly caught. Although, some cheaters have been able to get away with it, some for months, years, or nearly a decade. Here, it's a history of some of COD Zombies most notorious cheaters. First, let's start with the most notoriously cheated record, Syndicate's round 115 game on Black Ops 1, Kino Dertone. Most people who have been active in the community for recent years has heard about this cheated record, but if you've been out of the loop for a while or haven't heard of this game, let me break it down for you. On November 3rd, 2011, Syndicate would upload his final part of his round 115 game on Kino Dratone. While unknown to him at the time, this game was the highest round achieved on the map, making it a world record. Furthermore, this record would become the most viewed high round in COD Zombies history, with over 14 million views. So if the record had over 14 million people watching it, then how come no one knew it was cheated? Well, back in 2011, it was fairly difficult to tell if someone was cheating unless they were using glitches, especially considering Zombies came out just three years prior and most people played on console, it's easy to see why no one caught him. Furthermore, Syndicate was playing on PC and knew how to use certain commands such as noclip and potentially many more, such as weapon commands, timescale, etc. This gave him a massive advantage over other players as almost no one played on PC, let alone knew these commands at the time. And lastly, Syndicate had a lot of gameplay uploaded unlike most early records. These reasons are part of the reason why Syndicate's round 115 game was considered legit for nearly a decade. So why did it take so long for players to figure out this record was cheated and how did they catch him? If we take a look at Syndicate's gameplay during the 115 game, you'll notice it has nowhere near the same amount of views as a 14 million video. On top of that, just two days later after achieving this game, a player named Ravex would achieve round 120, although this footage has since been privated. Despite this, just one month later, another player named the Jim Bogabo would reach round 132. Due to this, not many people looked into Syndicate's game since it wasn't a record anymore. Though, it still gained millions of views from people who wanted to experience classic zombies nostalgia. But that was until March of 2021, when a player named Who Needs Jug would start analyzing Syndicate's game. While going through Syndicate's gameplay, Jug found a lot of inconsistencies from the things Syndicate was saying to the way he played. But the biggest inconsistency was found on round 69. When Syndicate was reloading his thunder gun, it showed the character he was playing as, which was Nikolai. However, just a day later, he would upload a video of himself on round 71. But there was a problem. Instead of Syndicate playing as Nikolai, he would be playing as a different character named Takio. This is already a red flag as it's impossible to change character in the same game on Black Ops 1. Furthermore, Syndicate claimed both recordings were the same game. The reason we know this is because on the round 69 gameplay, he did a small Q&A, answering the question of why he wasn't using Mule Kick. In his own words, he said, Downed, lost Mule Kick, and Thunder Gun, not risking losing it again. What makes this even more interesting is Syndicate said the exact same thing in his round 71 footage. Avoiding stupid downs, but the only stupid down I've had was at round 27, and that's when I had Mule Kick. Now everyone's been like, why no Mule Kick? And the reason for no Mule Kick is simply because I had it, but... I got the mule kick and then I got the thunder gun. So the thunder gun was in my mule kick slot, which is an absolutely idiotic move. I just completely forgot about losing it. I just didn't think I'd go down, to be honest. I got a bit overconfident. 
This in itself is already enough evidence to prove Syndicate splice his round 115 game. However, when a YouTuber named Russian brought it up to question in mid-March of 2021, Syndicate would respond to the tweet saying, My game crashed after the round 69 hype video I posted, so I had to redo the run. So I picked up where I left off. I understand the confusion of me talking about the downs, etc., but I literally picked up where I left off as if it was the same run. There's two ways to interpret this. Either Syndicate admitted to splicing his run and modding himself back to round 69, or he somehow banged out another game all the way up until 71. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he played another game up until 71. Well, even if we are generous, it's still really hard to believe. You see, on the same day of him reaching round 71, Syndicate would upload a Minecraft video. Also, these uploads between the round 69 game and the 71 game wouldn't have been that far apart, more than likely 12 to 18 hours apart. This makes it difficult to believe he actually played another game all the way up until round 71, right after his 69 game, especially considering how slow he was playing. Now this point could be easily disproved if Syndicate had kept the footage unlisted for a few days and made it public. Although, that would be a fairly strange thing to do. Furthermore, this isn't the only evidence we have on this game. If we completely ignore the fact this record was spliced and take a look at his downs, we can see a massive inconsistency. First, he claimed he downed on round 27. Then on round 81, he would take his second down. So, to keep his game going, he would buy Cook Revive again. However, if you buy Quick Revive three times, the machine will disappear. Although, the next time we see the Quick Revive is on round 84, and it's still there. This means Syndicate lied again. The machine should have disappeared, but since the record was spliced, it remained in place. Furthermore, in Syndicate's game, he did not purchase Claymores till round 71, the M14 once till round 76, the PM63 till round 76, as well as the MPL and MP5K till round 76, and the Olympia and Bowie Knife up until round 81. Keep in mind, these are all wall weapons and are essential for the early game, so the fact he did not purchase these until late in the game is odd. On top of that, in early October of 2011, Syndicate has footage showing him buying the M14, arguably the most useful wall buy for early rounds. At this point, there's too many inconsistencies with the things Syndicate said and did during his game. So, I think it's safe to say this record was cheated. Surprisingly, this wasn't the only time a popular Zombies YouTuber cheated a record. In early 2011, a YouTuber named Mr. Dalek JD would reach round 74 on 5, which would have been the world record at the time. Although, six years later, a player by the name of Carandal would upload a video on November 4th, 2017, exposing Mr. Dalek's game. The way he exposed Dalek is by looking at his points. On round 74, Dalek has a whopping 8,253,000 points. But when he downed, the game over screen showed he got 8,000,000 388,000 points throughout the entire game. This means Dalek spent roughly 135,000 points, which is astonishing low for the amount of points he had. Furthermore, the way he was gaining these points was with the MP5K wall buy, which costs 500 points every time you buy ammo, and each time you buy ammo, you'll get 120 bullets. I should also note that you can hit a maximum of 3 zombies with a bullet. This means if we are generous and assume Dalek has perfect aim, he would get 30 points per bullet. On paper, that sounds like a lot, but if we do simple math, we can figure out that 120 bullets perfectly hitting 3 zombies will get you 3,600 points. And if we calculate the amount of points he spent during that game with how much the MP5K ammo costs, we get 270 ammo buys. 
do 270 times 3,600 points, and you get 972,000 points. Nowhere near the $8 million Dalek claimed to have gotten. This is already overwhelming proof that Dalek cheated. So, if it was this easy to prove Dalek's game was unlegit, why did it take 6 years to expose him? Well, it's because Dalek privated the video, more than likely within a year after it was posted. The reason why he did this is more than likely because he knew it was modded and didn't want to be exposed or was ashamed of what he did. Also, the only reason why Corandal was able to prove this game was cheated is because someone re-uploaded Dalek's game back in 2013. Surprisingly, this isn't the last time a Zombies YouTuber is cheated. A fairly popular Zombies YouTuber named The Aston Pro, previously known as The London Project, would upload his achievements as well as guides for high rounds during 2015 to 2017, resulting in his channel to gain a big following for the time. On top of that, when he streamed on Twitch, he would typically average 800 to over 1,000 viewers, which was incredible back then. Though, in early 2017, Ashton made the biggest mistake of his career. He would start streaming himself on round 215 on the Black Ops 3 map Zetsubo no Shima, but when he was going down an elevator on the map, he would start randomly knifing. Just 5 seconds later, a mod menu showed up on the screen. Shortly after, he would pause the game and end the stream. This shocked his community and the high round community too. The fact one of the most popular high rounder YouTubers was caught cheating surprised many. Ashton would eventually make a response video on March 8th of 2017. The response is somewhat long, so I'll explain it as simple as possible. Ashton said Treyarch came out with an update for Black Ops 3 and said when you played local offline, your game would crash and you'd get a connection interrupted. Also, it wasn't just happening to him. Another famous player named IL Steve IL would get a connection interrupted on Dorijendrak on round 156. He then said there wasn't a point in playing zombies if you're constantly getting a connection error late into the game. So he decided to try and play some custom zombies for a bit in the Steam Workshop. Then, he went to the mod section and found a mod tool, eventually installing it. The reason why is because he wanted to start from round 189 and play all the way up till 220 and see if he got a connection error. He then said he got to round 215 and didn't want to stream it but still decided to do so anyway. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense because if you didn't want to stream it, then why did you do so anyway? Furthermore, once a mod menu popped up, he quickly ended the stream, which also makes no sense. If he was trying to see if he got a connection interrupted, wouldn't he have put in the title that the game was modded, or at least tried to explain himself after the mod menu showed up? If anything, it seems like he tried to start the stream on round 215 to get views and also try and prove he was a good high rounder. But after the mod menu showed up, he quickly tried to cover up any evidence by shutting off the stream. Also, before streaming the mod menu, the Ashen Pro would upload a video on March 6, 2017, claiming he finally got round 200 plus on Zetsubo, and it took him a very long time to reach that round. He would also say he's paused on round 215 and would stream it. This video alone makes his response video contradict itself. He tried deceiving his fans, saying this game was legit, but obviously it wasn't. Based on this evidence alone, I can confidently say that Ashton Pro cheated this game. But this brings in a new question. If he cheated the Zetsubo game, what about his other games such as his round 203 on the Giant? Nobody knows for sure if those games are cheated, but it wouldn't surprise me if they are. At this point in the video, we've seen zombie YouTubers cheat records, but what about players that mostly only the competitive side of the community has heard of? Well, what if I told you not one, but two owners of the world record website for COD Zombies cheated their records? 
first, let's talk about the most notorious and previous owner named Sith Baz. In 2014, he was caught cheating multiple high rounds. However, the staff of Zombie Records, the website Sith Bass owned, defended him, saying his games were not cheated. They would also spread misinformation, and one staff member named Firefly would go as far as messaging you and defame your character if you claim Sith Bass cheated. Despite their efforts to claim he did not cheat, in 2016, Crandall, who exposed Dalek, would upload a video with irrefutable evidence against Sith Bass. The first evidence is Sith Bass's round 100 Keynote or Totem game. At first, everything is normal until you look at the monkey bombs. You see, when you get monkey bombs from the mystery box, the max amount of monkeys you can carry is 3. Though, on round 71, it looks like Sith Bass has more than 3. In fact, it almost looks like he has unlimited monkeys, which is not possible. So how was he able to get so many monkey bombs? Well, it has to do with unlimited ammo, which is obviously not allowed for record attempts. This right here is 100% proof this game was unlegit, although there's still more evidence. On round 51, the mystery box was on the stage. However, when you hit it enough times, it'll eventually move. Still, on round 71, the box was on the stage. This could be a coincidence until you realize on round 89, in which Sith Bass shows his only trade out, the mystery box is still on the stage. Furthermore, Sith Bass was using God Mode, which makes it impossible for you to die. We know this because while trading on the stage, he did not get hit by the zombie despite it making a swinging animation and also being right next to him. Furthermore, he would activate the electric trap in the dressing room, although he doesn't show this. The reason we know this is because before he cuts away from the trade, he has 450,000 points. But once it cuts away, it says he has 449,000 points. Keep in mind, each trap costs 1,000 points to activate it. On top of that, if he tried running through the trap, he would not have taken damage because of god mode. The way to detect this is via a red hit marker that'll show on the screen. So, instead, he would run to the trap near the spawn room and activate it so we can show the round transition and also not show him running through the electric trap. Lastly, on round 100, he would throw a monkey bomb so he can buy Cook Revive. The only issue with this is when he threw the monkey bomb, he still had 3 monkeys left, which is even more proof that he used unlimited ammo. Also, this wasn't the only record he cheated. He would eventually fake a round 100 on Shinger Law, and also a round 100 on 5 back in February of 2012. This would make it the first ever round 100 on Black Ops 1, and also the first reset. The issue with this is he didn't reset. While on round 101, his game would randomly go black and start glitching, eventually leading him to go back to round 1. The issue with this is it did not show the 5 cutscene before you start on round 101. This is good evidence to prove it was cheated, but the nail in the coffin comes from the zombie corpses. If you look closely in the video, you can see the zombie corpses around the table. This is suspicious as there's only two ways this could have occurred. He could have let the zombies stay on the map long enough for them to despawn, which would explain the corpses, or he did the infamous 5 table glitch, which allowed him to reach round 101. Furthermore, this glitch was patched in later versions, though after his quote-unquote reset, he would open the PS3 home screen, and it showed him playing offline. This is again very good evidence to prove he played on an older version of Black Ops 1 to do this glitch. So this begs the question, now that we know Sith Bass cheated, who was the other owner of Zombie Records that cheated? This owner was named Wings of Oblivion. However, before becoming an owner of the website in 2018, he was exposed for cheating multiple games back in 2013 to 2014. Two of these games would be his 378 kills on No Man's Land, and his round 218 on Kino Dertone, 
which would have been the world record at the time. On September 9th, 2014, Insane Operative would upload a video exposing Wings. In the video, Operative claims Wings has demi-god mode. Basically, you can still take hits from zombies, although it is much more difficult to down. This makes it difficult to tell if someone is cheating, although there is a drawback with using demi-god mode. You see, while on round 153, Wings would take his first down. At first, everything looks normal until you can see the horde of zombies staying where he downed. On a normal game, this does not happen. Instead, the zombies will walk into corners or different parts of the map while you're downed. This right here is 100% proof his 218 game was cheated. Furthermore, Wings would achieve round 127 on Shangri-La, which would have been the console world record. Although, this too used demi-god mode. This begs the question of how Wings was able to become the owner of Zombie Records after multiple record-breaking games were exposed. Well, a lot of it has to do with money and the state of Zombie Records, more commonly referred as Zombie World Records. I won't go into much detail, but just know at the time, the site wasn't in the best shape and needed a new owner, even if it was somebody like Wings to at least better the site. I can't say for sure if he's had an impact on the site ever since 2018, although I will say with the new staff in recent months, the site has gotten much better, which is awesome. At this point in the video, I've covered YouTubers and owners of the official record site for zombies. So what about ordinary players that don't have any influence or power over them? Well, we'll first have to look at first room challenges. Out of every category that exists, first rooms have had the most cheaters out of all of them. Because of this, I will only cover two well-known first room players, the first of which is Frostbite. Frostbite is one of the more interesting cheaters within the zombies community. Because not many players know about first rooms, besides the people who play them, it's fairly common for cheaters within the first room community to get away with cheating easily and not have it publicly known. This happened to Frost multiple times, most notably when his friend Lane Vader exposed him on the live stream. Surprisingly, this was still relatively unknown until Christmas of 2021 when Frostbite achieved round 36 on Black Ops 1, Quick Revive side, for Verruckt. This was a pretty big deal considering how widely known Verruckt is, and also for its insane difficulty. So the fact he got round 36 was very impressive. Although, that was going to quickly change. A player by the name of Calvin was starting to take interest in the first room and was watching the highest rounds achieved by some of the previous record holders, and of course, Frostbite. Despite being fairly new to first rooms, Calvin noticed Frostbite would hoard up the zombies on early rounds while the other previous record holders would camp for the early rounds. Furthermore, Calvin noticed something odd with Frostbite's story. Unlike the other record holders who grinded the first room for years, Frost was somehow able to get it fairly quickly. What makes it even more odd is he rarely had gameplay of his personal bus on the other first rooms. That's when Calvin started investigating his game. First, he looked at the top 4 best games and noticed how many times they would survive a hit from a zombie until they took 2 hits and downed. If you look at the spreadsheet for Black at 35, Swato 35, and Flow 33, you can see a consistent pattern of hits survived before going down. Although, if you look at Frostbite's game, you can see a massive gap between the third down and the fourth and final down. In fact, it was so big, he took 85 more hits than Placket, 72 more hits than Swato, and 74 more hits than Flow, which is very suspicious. Because of the massive hit difference between the third and fourth down, many players wondered if Frostbite used God Mode. Though, if you're not new to zombies, you more than likely know if you do use god mode, it'll show up at the top left of the screen. So, how could players not tell, even with statistics? Well, there is a way to make certain commands such as god mode not appear at the top left. 
The way you do this is by using no print. Essentially, you can use whatever command you want and it will never show up at the top left. This makes it extraordinarily more difficult for a person to tell if someone is cheating without the use of math and other pieces of evidence. Despite this, theoretically speaking, it was possible for Frost to survive 70 more hits than the other record holders until his final down. So, while people had their suspicions, there was no way for them to confirm it was cheated unless they had a confession. That's when another player named Sketchy, who was close with Frost, would get in a call with him and see if he would admit to the round 36 first room being cheated. That's when 2 minutes and 10 seconds into the recording, Frost says this. Yeah, and you know I still play it every day, right? Do you really? Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna, like, I'm trying, I'm gonna obviously do it again legitimately. So you're trying to, like, re-get it legitimate? Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yup, he literally confessed his game was cheated. Because of this, in the math done by Calvin, Frost round 36 quickside was removed. I should also note, Frost has been playing first rooms for years. Due to this, it's highly likely he cheated most, if not all of his personal busts, and would also explain why he rarely had any gameplay, especially full gameplay, for his first rooms. But what if I told you Frost wasn't alone? Remember his friend Lane Vader? Well, he too had been playing first rooms for years, and had been accused of cheating them on many occasions. Though, this has been hard to prove, and I'll explain why later. First, we need to take a look at a game he played back in March of 2015, which was 100% confirmed to be cheated. So, what was this record? It was a World at War Varukt high round, achieving round 302, making it a world record. However, it wasn't. In the same video, Crandall uploaded on Sith Bass, who'd also exposed Lane Vader for blatantly using God Mode. The reason we know this is because when Lane runs through an electric trap on round 250, he does not get a red hit indicator. This is 100% confirmed he's using god mode, because when you don't use god mode, you'll get a hit indicator as seen here. Furthermore, what makes Lane even more suspicious is the fact he copyright strike Corandal's video shortly after it was uploaded. This caused the video to be down for over 30 hours. Furthermore, the separate video he made on Lane is no longer available. This too was more than likely copyright claimed by Lane Vader. So, if he cheated a world record and also copyright claimed a video about him, what other records has he cheated? While not confirmed cheated, we can look at his Nuketown and Round 40 Bus Depot first room records. First, let's take a look at his Nuketown game. When he starts a game, everything looks normal until you realize it doesn't say Lane Vader connected on the bottom left. This is suspicious because when you start a game on Black Ops 2, it'll say your username connected. As an example, if we look at Tex Round 58 Newtown game, which is a world record, you can see Unknown Soldier 0 connected. This is evidence that Lane Vader could have used no print, similar to what Frostbite did during his 36th game. Despite Lane's game not being confirmed cheated, the fact this didn't show up is very suspicious. So if it's not confirmed cheated, what about his Bus Depot game? Well, this one is even more tricky to prove it's cheated, although people still have their suspicions. During his round 40 Bus Depot game, his gameplay would freeze for roughly 30 seconds on multiple occasions. People believe he was splicing the game, but what more than likely happened is him playing on a virtual machine, which would explain why the footage was glitching or freezing as he was recording with his graphics card. I should also note, round 40 in the Bus Depot first room is insane. I say this because of how difficult the first room is. There's no quick revive, so you have to play flawless, and the room is extremely tiny and heavily RNG based. This means it can take years for someone to even get a round 30 in the first room. What makes it even more odd is the record holder, Tone Stone, would call out Lane for cheating a round 40 first room on Black Ops 1 Shinonuma. 
Well, after calling them out, Lane would somehow beat Tonestone's record on Bus Depot by over four rounds. Same with the transit first room record within literally days apart. If you ask me, that's pretty suspicious considering how long you'd have to grind to achieve those rounds in the first room. Surprisingly, Zombie World Records banned him, so any future records he claims to have will not be counted. Also, if it's true these first rooms were cheated, that would mean he's been deceiving players and casuals for years. Hell, in 2017, a popular Zombies YouTuber by the name of Mr. T. Lexify would react to his zombie escapes. And also in 2019, the relaxing end, arguably the most known Zombies player of all time, would send him a birthday gift. Yikes. Keep in mind, this is just the start of players deceiving the community. In 2017, a fairly known high rounder named Rox Wrong would achieve round 229 on Kino Der Toten, making this a world record. The problem with this is Rox Wrong didn't achieve this. In fact, he wasn't even the one playing the game. Before starting up the 229 game, there was a tournament for Kino Der Toten, and whoever got the highest round or the world record would win the most money. So, Roxrong started up a stream and pretended he was playing even though it wasn't him. The reason we know this is because when the game was paused, the mouse on the screen would go off to another screen, indicating whoever was playing had two monitors. Well, when Roxrong made a video responding to the people claiming he cheated, it showed he had only one monitor. However, he claimed to use his laptop as a second monitor. This was also debunked. On round 139, he was typing in Twitch chat even though the mouse did not go off to his second monitor. And while responding to people questioning his game in the video, he would try proving it was him playing by moving a cursor. The issue with this is he only showed the mouse for less than a second, and it didn't move at all. This shows even more evidence that it wasn't him playing. Furthermore, when he downed in his game, it says Rock's Wrong Downed. Keep in mind of the capital R and the capital W in his name. I say this because at the time when the game was played, only one person on Steam was named Rock's Wrong, and their name only had lowercase letters. I should also note that pretty much every Black Ops 1 player uses Steam to play. On top of that, you can change your Steam name whenever you please, but it won't update in-game. This means whoever was playing was using a trainer, such as Zolfernos, to change their name to Rocks Wrong with the capital R and W. Also, if you're confused as to what a trainer does, it's basically a modding tool which isn't allowed for record attempts. What makes this game even more suspicious is it was more than likely Wings of Oblivion playing it. If this is true, then it doesn't make too much sense as to why Rock's Wrong would allow Wings to play. Is it because he wanted to leave the community and go out with a bang? Or maybe Wings was blackmailing him? The reason will more than likely remain unknown. Although, what makes this cheated record even worse is the viewers who were watching the game live and thought it was legit started donating to him. Rox was not only cheating a game to win tournament money that he didn't deserve, but he was also scamming his viewers out of money. Yeah, I don't really have any words to say besides the fact I'm severely disappointed. Thankfully, this is one of the only instances where someone has cheated a record to scam viewers. I know what you might be asking. If I've covered high rounds in first rooms, has anyone ever cheated an easter egg speedrun? arguably the most popular category in Zombies. Unfortunately, it has happened. On September 13th, a player by the name of Scrappy would achieve a 33 minute and 57 second record on the Garad Krovi Easter Egg using Mega Gobblegums, making it a world record. Considering how competitive Easter Egg speedruns are, this was insanely impressive. In fact, it almost seemed too impressive. While using the Anywhere But Here Gobblegum, which teleports you to a random location on the map, Scrappy was getting near-perfect teleportations. This allowed him to finish his steps quicker, therefore saving him time. 
Because of how good these teleports were, a few players who I won't name out of respect for their privacy would start investigating. So much so, they would look at Scrappy's theater on Black Ops 3. When you look at someone's theater, you can see their previous games, which is what they did, and what they found was shocking. Just before getting the record, Scrappy was found using a patch to manipulate RNG and force it anywhere but here Gobblegum to teleport wherever he wanted. The reason they knew this is because while figuring out the best coordinates to teleport to, it would show the coordinates on the screen. Keep in mind, this does not show up during a normal game. Because of this, that's how they knew Scrappy was using a patch to manipulate RNG, which is obviously not allowed for record attempts. Furthermore, it was confirmed he cheated a round 30 speedrun on Kino Dratoden as well. This made people wonder if his other games were cheated via manipulating RNG. While it wasn't confirmed, it was found that his speedruns on Dirajendrog had some insane luck with boss rounds. If you don't know, certain maps have boss rounds and will occur every couple of rounds. Well, it turns out he had 10 games on Dirajendrog that got 4 dog rounds. Keep in mind, for each game, the chances of getting 4 dog rounds to round 30 is a 4% chance. So the fact it happened 10 times within a month is insanely lucky. So if Scrappy was this lucky, does it mean it's confirmed he cheated the Dirajendrog games? Surprisingly not. While many players consider these games as cheated, it's very difficult to tell if someone is using a patch to manipulate RNG unless you have concrete evidence. Because players were able to find concrete evidence of his round 30, plus a Garad Krovi easter egg, and also had Scrappy admit to these games being cheated, it would result in him getting a 1 year ban on Zombie World Records. He could no longer submit solo records, and if he was going to play a co-op record with two or more players, he could not be the host, which would prevent him from using any patches. Surprisingly, after one year, the ban would be lifted after Scrappy proved himself, and so far it seems like he's changed for the better, which is awesome. Sadly, this wasn't the only time a player has cheated the Garad Krovi easter egg. A player by the name of Raspers would announce in a Twitch streamer's chat saying he got a 33 minute easter egg completion, but when asked for gameplay, would say something along the lines of, I don't want to upload it, I'm not proud of it. However, he would eventually upload footage 3 days later. Though similar to Scrappy's Grod Krovy easter egg, Raspers was also exposed for manipulating RNG with a patch. While doing an easter egg step which requires you to kill zombies to get a cylinder drop, he would get all 4 cylinders within the first 4 zombies he killed. Keep in mind, for each zombie you have a 10% chance of getting a cylinder, so the fact he got all 4 within the first 4 zombies is insanely lucky, making it a 1 out of 10,000 chance this happens in the game. Also, during the easter egg, you need the dragon to spit fire, and the only time this happens during his game is once on the egg, and also when you're with Tank to get his napalm kills for the specialist weapon. Basically, the dragon spit fire when he needed to. So the fact this happens during a game was highly suspicious. So much so, it was confirmed to be cheated. This eventually resulted in Raspers removing footage of the game, though it still exists via a Mr. T Lexify reaction, which is pretty funny. Though, this wouldn't be the end for Raspers. He would eventually go for round 30 speedruns, achieving multiple world records, but would be banned on zombie world records shortly after. What makes this interesting is he was accused of using wall hacks and also patching another easter egg, though this was never confirmed. I should also note, he has streamed some of these speedruns live. Despite this, the suspicion against these records was enough for him to get banned for allegedly using wall hacks. Though, another thing I should note is Raspers isn't exactly the most liked person in the community. I won't go into detail with some of the stuff he said because it's against YouTube's terms of service, but you can see why players don't like him. This, along with the suspicion, is pretty much the reason why he was banned. Though, it's unknown if he'll be given a second chance. Remember, 
The only games that were confirmed cheated was his Garad Krovi Easter Egg. The rest of the other games were suspicious, and players didn't have much or any evidence to prove they were cheated. Surprisingly, this is just a small list of hundreds of players that have cheated in the past. Because of this, I won't be able to talk about every cheater. Other than that, thank you for watching.